Hi, welcome to The Seasoned Artist. I'm Barry McAllister, and thanks for joining us for another episode where we bring the, the works of area visual artists to you to enjoy. And today our special guest is Kevin Joseph O'Connor. Thanks a lot for being here today. Hey, thanks for having yeah, me. Yeah, thanks for coming in and yeah. bringing all your, your goods and your, your, your talents to, to share with us. Uh, just kind of looking at a little bit of what uh, Kevin says about his work. Uh, he describes it as visually striking, uh, interactions of exaggerated and desperate color studies that build richly textured compositions. We'll unstack that in just a minute because there's a lot there. A lot of words. Um, yes, a lot, there's a lot built into that. I love that. Uh, and just kind of looking at your background, I uh, understand that uh, you um, had a BA degree in writing and creative literature. Mm -hmm. uh, and then you went back, uh, finally got back to your passion of visual art and uh, you sought the nonverbal way to articulate experience and awareness. There's a lot of wonderful things to un 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 unpack here. So um, what about your experience? How did you, what's your educational background that got you back to art? Yeah, so um, back to art might be a funny way to think about it. Um, I was raised in an artist's home. My parents are artists. Uh, my mom has had a glass studio for over 30 years. And so I grew up with a lot of art influence. And so getting back to visual art seemed like a really natural, natural thing. Did you start out uh, as, a, as a painter or what was your journey as an artist? I mean, did you look at getting into glass work that your mother did or? Um, no, I think of it mainly as poring over books. Uh, we had uh, so many history books and art history books and books on painters and sculptors. And so a lot of my memories as a kid are just sitting on the floor and pulling books off the shelf and looking at books about Maxfield Parrish and Paul Clay and Goya and these people who would become hugely influential and in how I understood and related to art. So when you studied art then, um what was that like? Was there a, I always like to, to find out if, if there was an instructor or a, a yeah, teacher that really absolutely. had an influence on you. Yeah, so at the end of my college undergrad, um, I loved studying English so much that I, all of my electives I just used for more English classes. It was basically a double major in English and English. Uh, but at the end of my time uh, with my undergrad, I started to take modern art history classes and uh, drawing and oil painting classes. Mary Matthias Dickerson uh, is an instructor that I had at the end of my, my undergrad term and she was hugely influential. And um, here in Nashville, Amy Crimser Sterling is another painter and, and instructor and she's been um, just a, a real kind mentoring friend and teacher. Um, and so th there have been people who have left a, a large mark on me and encouraged me to keep moving towards this, uh, what feels like a calling now. Right. Yeah. And, and something that struck me is something very unique and interesting about the way you talk about your work. Um, it's where you were uh, like looking more at your bio. It talks about you creating meditative, gestural, abstract images made with a tactile intimacy. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's pretty deep. Talk to me about that. It also refer to them as like visual poems, but yeah. what's all that up underneath of the, the meditative feel that, uh, that you write about? Yeah, thanks for asking. So I, after finishing the, the undergrad in English, I decided to pursue nonverbal uh, expression. And that's where painting and, and drawing and, and color comes back into play, where there's a lot of just play involved. Um, there are things that we don't know how to talk about with words, and, and there are limits to what our vocabulary can articulate. But there are things that maybe on a deeper pre-linguistic level, we understand and relate to intrinsically and intuitively. Uh, and art has a way of stopping us in our tracks and making us relate to wonder and possibility in a way that uh, we can reason with and, and try and use words to arrive at, but almost at a, a more base level. That's what I've been exploring with color. 
Right, right. Um, I know we'll get to see your work in a little bit in one of our other sections over the other studio, but uh, uh, will you talk about the contrast to the pooling of the paints and how you get to your, your technique with the uh, destroyed brushes. I thought that yeah. was interesting. Maybe talk about your technique just a little bit that yeah, we'll get to see sure. in a while. So I, I should take better care of my tools. I don't. <laughs> um, there's a lot of just natural intuition for what medium I need to use within painting. Uh, so I make available palette knives and, and, and broken brushes and, and handles of things. I, I use my hands to do a lot of just finger painting. I mess with different mediums that have reactions to paint and different types of, of mainly water-based paint because I like the organic reactive nature of water-based material. But that and pastels and, and oil and uh, color pencils and these things that each seem to give a different kind of angle on how it can find ways to articulate the thing I'm driving towards. Right, right. Like I guess it helps you keep the cost of your supplies down too if you're using old broken things in your, <laughs> oh, your hands. I don't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, you know, save money where you can, right? But um, the exaggerated and desperate color studies, building rich, uh, rich textures, is there an approach you take to color like that or is it just what you feel in the moment? I mean, I know you put your art talent to, to work, but uh, do you go at it uh, with a feel of like coming at a color that represents a feeling or an emotion or? That's a good question. Um, I don't know is the answer. And uh. I'm usually not thinking there, there may be a, a very limited color palette that I have in mind for a piece, but I'd say in general, I'm not thinking further than whatever the next color or two colors are. And color theory is helpful. Color uh, knowledge of, of composition and structure is, is helpful and important, but um, I want it to be a, a lot more intuitive, intrinsic human level of, of connection. Right. Well, that's all fascinating. We'll get to see some more of it. And we'll talk a little bit more in just a minute, but let's take a quick break and we'll come back with more of the seasoned artists with our guest, Kevin Joseph O'Connor, in just a moment. Have you written a book? You can become a published author with Dorrance Publishing, the nation's oldest publishing services company. Countless authors have trusted Dorrance for nearly a hundred years to bring their book to the market. Our professional team will edit your text, design your book pages, and create an appealing, eye-catching custom cover. Plus, our authors benefit from a custom book promotion marketing campaign that makes your book available where people buy books, like Amazon and brick-and-mortar bookstores. So make this free call right now to claim your free author's guide to publishing. Don't wait another day. Take one step closer to realizing your dream of becoming a published author and seeing your name in print. You've already written a book, so the next thing to do is make this free call right now to Dorn's Publishing and get your free guide to publishing. Call right now. Call 800-919-5456. That's 800-919-5456. 800-919-5456. Everybody wants cheap airfare, but where do you find it? You call low-cost airlines. Their prices are direct from the airlines, and they're so low you can't find these fares published anywhere. They specialize in cheap flights, discount hotel rooms, cheap car rental rates, and great package deals anywhere around the world. Wherever you want to go, they can help you get there cheaply and with the best price guarantee. If you want the lowest prices on your airline tickets or other travel services, call now. That's right, call. That's the only way to get these rates. Experts are standing by 24-7 to get you the cheapest airfare and hotel rates available. So don't wait. Call right now for the lowest travel prices anywhere and for great last-minute travel deals, too. Call right now, 800-337-5121. 800-337-5121. 800-337-5121. That's 800-337-5121.
So welcome back to The Seasoned Artist. I'm Barry McAllister. And again, our guest to here with us is Kevin Joseph O'Connor. He's a visual artist, and we've been talking about uh, his process and a lot of things up underneath uh, how he uh, approaches art. But I also remember that you had uh, uh, taken some awards with some of your work. Can you just kind of briefly tell us about some of the things, uh, some of the awards? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so some of the... Uh, more notable things that I am really grateful for receiving a couple of years ago. There's a, a gallery in, in London called the Holy Art Gallery, and uh, they had an, a virtual exhibit from the, the time of COVID for the theme of nostalgia. And uh, three pieces were selected, and, and I won first place for that exhibition. Um, grateful for that. Most recently, though, um, I just got a piece back from a 42nd annual color award exhibit in Stanford, Connecticut, and the the soldier for that show was Laura G. Einstein, who's a manager at the Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York. And feeling that some of my work was able to communicate beyond my immediate circle where there's something here that is impacting people mm -hmm. that's my goal and so having this mm -hmm. this sense of voice and agency in the work that's represented at least clearly enough where people are responding in some way that is right. uh deeply human that that's that's a, a large motivator in, in why i make what i make um, right well, nice are there are in that vein then are there some uh, certain themes that you kind of work with or yeah uh... absolutely um, the largest theme that I keep coming back to is the idea of of compassion and um, the work that I make I think of as reflections of compassion and how more than the ability to express something simply for the the opportunity to move color around and and have space to do that um, what I want is to wrestle with these ideas of what does it mean to be here and now in the present tense what does it mean to slow down enough to sit with myself and to hold space for that and so painting is a space where I've dedicated that that process and experience to holding space for that, really for the, 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 the purpose of allowing some sort of deep honesty to be present. And the, the, the work itself on the other side of the canvas, the, the canvas looking back at me, it reveals some sense of, of, of ability and capacity to hold everything that we're putting into it. Mm. And so, more than, am I having a good day so I paint happy things? Am I having a bad day so I paint like sad things? Right. Um, encouraging myself to sit with slowing down and being present mm. and whatever comes to the surface. Right. I think of this as a very nonverbal communication. Right. But what are the words that come to mind? What are the things that I'm surprised by? What are the memories that come up while I'm working? And those are those are paramount to this whole process working. It's it's therapeutic, but it's also a matter of I want to end at a place where it has its own voice. Right. And when I start to notice a sense of surprise in my work, when I am going in a certain direction and then I'm blindsided by something else entirely. Right. It ends on a note of kindness and holding mm. space for us and so right when i am able to present my work and someone says like i don't understand art theory and then to me that doesn't matter mm. but your your work somehow moved me mm -hmm. and i don't know why but i resonated with me it's like a mirror nice yeah and so i want it to be this reflection of compassion right not just in a in a way that um is pretty but right, in a way right. that is beautiful and holding space yeah. for all things. I would say it'd be interesting to uh, to hear people's uh, response to uh, your work if they feel something completely different or if they touched on some of the same things you were feeling yeah. when you put 
put it together. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that, uh, that's, that, that's amazing. And yeah. I know we're, we're excited to get to, uh, get to having you create something for us, or at least begin something and get as far along as we can uh, over yeah. in our other studio. But uh, anything you want to tell us about that? We're just going to set, set things up and just, you, do you just going to see what you feel in the moment or? Well, I, I have a, a primed canvas that I'm going to, uh, I've, I've selected some sort of a, a broad color palette and I'm going to, okay. to start with some sort of sketching and uh, develop some sort of structural base that I'll take it to my studio and finish later. Okay, great. Yeah. Well, we look forward to, to seeing that. And we've been seeing some of your, uh, some of your works. We'll get to see some images, images of that too as we go along. But, uh, uh, but now we'll take another break and we'll come back in just a few minutes and go over to the other studio with the seasoned artist and we'll see what our special guest gets underway with for us. Do you listen to the TV on high volume or have trouble hearing conversations? Then you would benefit from hearing aids. Don't waste thousands on expensive hearing aids when you can get Nano's revolutionary technology for just $297. Don't be fooled by higher priced hearing aids. The CIC Recharge is a true hearing aid, not an amplifier. With rechargeable technology many customers say is superior to more expensive models. Call now and get not one, but two Nano hearing aids for just $297. $297. Plus, we'll add a portable charging case and ship your order absolutely free. The CIC Recharge has a tiny in-the-ear canal design that is nearly invisible. Why keep missing out on important conversations or waste thousands of dollars? Call and get two CIC Recharge hearing aids for only $297 and free shipping. 800-509-2745. Again, that's 800-509-2745. Do you owe $10,000 or more to the IRS? Call the tax man. Ooh, call the tax man. Call the tax man. If you owe $10,000 or more to the IRS, call me right now. The IRS is the most relentless collection agency in America. They have the power to legally take everything you own, home, paycheck, autos, any asset you have. So what do you do? Call me now. My team of experts can help you keep your money. We have programs that can significantly reduce or eliminate what you owe, even payment plans that now stretch out for months. We can also stop collection calls, wage garnishments, and remove tax liens. So if you owe the IRS a lot of money and you want to keep it, don't wait. Call the tax man right now. And we're back with the seasoned artist. We're over here in Studio B, where Kevin has things set up to uh, get ready to start a, a piece for us. So you're gonna just dive right in and see what happens? Yeah, I have a, a, a vague color palette that I've, I've put together ahead of time and I've treated the canvas and I'm just gonna uh, start getting my materials out and put down some structure. Well, good deal. Uh, Kevin will get to talk to us a little bit as he goes here and we'll see what, uh, what unfolds and what he has to say. So have fun. I'm gonna get over here out of the way so that you can awesome. do your thing. And I'm just going to start out by getting some colors out and seeing uh, where we want to begin today. Uh, I have a, a sketchbook here that I've collected a lot of different palettes that I've put together and um, just seeing where we want to have a starting point. Putting some colors down in these palettes that I have that are uh, honestly just filthy. I, Occasionally, we'll scrape them out and clean the palettes, but um, I really like the fact that there are other tints and pigments from previous paintings that just make their way onto the next work and the next work and the next work and how it just, it's an evolving thing. So um, I'm resistant to cleaning out the old, but. Right now I'm just testing pencils against some paint palettes that I've put down to see what kind of contrast I want to play with today. Sometimes it's a, a rushed thing where I'm just working and in it, but before then there's these moments of just gathering myself together and starting out really slow and making sure that I am here and I'm in this space and I'm present 
uh, with this process. I have my trusty Garden Fresh Organic Cantina Salsa filled with just tap water <laughs> that we're using today to mix some paint. Um, I have a, a, a gold, and I have an Indian red here, and I'm blending those into, uh, I don't know, some sort of darker tone that we're gonna add as a layer. So we're just seeing how some of these colors interact, how they talk to each other, how they play. I'm really enjoying these just light, brushy, textures here that we're getting. Sometimes I try to think about how could I use this brush the wrong way. Am I going to be able to use it to speak in some way that I wouldn't think about otherwise? And some of these are water soluble and they play really well with water. And some of them are water resistant and they'll push. And so you have just this contrast of elements as well. Um, using oil sticks is really fun to do with that as well. And these are water soluble. And so I'm just massaging the paint that it's pooling in around it. Lose a little bit of its definition, let it blend in a little with the paint around it while also Parts of it are still identifiable. There's some distinctness and uh, strength to it. I usually keep a journal with me and sometimes this becomes that, but as I'm working, Especially just uh, in silence or listening to music, I'll just try and become lost in whatever intuitive color or choice seems to be the next best best thing. Um, I try. I pay attention to the words that come to mind. Especially, th this is an exception, but especially as I'm thinking about nothing but the color and also um, everything else at the same time. The, the whole 
the whole world just slows down a little bit and you start to to think about things that you haven't thought about in a long time or things that uh, that come to mind are significant and so I try and take note of that sometimes it might be like a word or there might be some phrase that comes together and uh, one of those might end up being the title of the painting um, but it, if, it, if it's something that's resonant um, it's usually something that I'm learning about myself and about about the world and how to be more grounded in here and now while I'm in this creative process and exploring the process and, and making the thing is the thing. I'm not working towards an end goal. I'm not even thinking about the end goal or what the composition has to be. Um, there's a lot of time for that. And a lot of painting is this back and forth dialogue of being in it and there are no wrong choices and your intuition is help. But I will step away from the painting after working sometimes 15 minutes, sometimes an hour, and I'll go back and forth between this perspective of critical eye and theory and composition and all these things, and then diving back into the painting. So there's this back and forth dialogue, even as the painter, um, how do I make this work? Uh, is this actually something that is visually engaging and feels like it has a, a structure to it? So here we are. Kevin, I know you didn't have time to actually finish it and feel what what you needed to put into it. You needed some more time for that. But uh, uh, we can see what uh, a lot of your techniques are and your approach to things. So that's been very exciting. Enjoyed seeing you, you know, just kind of grab into your, your, your tools there and, uh, yeah, and the, the old brushes, like you said, the things, it was just really interesting to see. But, uh, and we're gonna give Kevin some more time away from our studio. And uh, in fact, we have the image now of the completed work. Let's just take a quick look. So Kevin, if people wanted to find out more about you, is there a website or social media or both that you could share with us? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, KevinJoseph.art or on Instagram, it's Kevin underscore Joseph. Uh, that's K-E-V-A-N. Uh, yeah, but feel free to reach out. Thank you so much for being here and sharing hey. everything with us. Thanks. Wish we had a lot more time just to delve into it more, but uh, thank you for sharing t with us today. Thanks. Great, and thanks for you being a part of the Seasoned Artist. We'll see you again next time. Mm -hmm.